This talk is on uh, church history and the four marks of the church, and it's one I gave for uh, the RCIA class at my local parish a while back. One reason I did, did the talk was because I am a convert from essentially no religion, so I went through the RCIA process myself, and so I'm very interested in the, the process and doing what I can to help people who are going on a similar journey. And the reason I'm talking about uh, history is that one reason I converted to the uh, Catholic Christianity was because of history. Was I thought that history was very much on the side of, uh, of the Catholic Church that it, it um, says that it is what it claims to be. And so in this discussion I'm going to uh, tell a bit of my own story. I'm going to give a little bit of a taste of history of church history and also give some tools that I hope will people help people to better understand church history and, and grow in their understanding of it. Now I do want to say a little bit about the connection between uh, history and faith. There is a close connection between history and uh, Catholic Christianity. And what I mean by that is that Christianity, and in particular uh, Catholic Christianity, is a historic religion. Uh, its claims can be proven or disproven uh, by looking at history. So, for example, were we to discover that uh, Jesus' body, if we were to find Jesus' body, right, uh, a dead body, that would prove that Christianity isn't true because Christianity is built on the idea that the tomb was empty because Jesus had uh, risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. So this, in this way you could really, uh, dis this is a very extreme example, but this is how you can kind of disprove uh, Christianity. So it really rests on uh, history. And this is very different from, say, uh, one example I like to think of is Buddhism. In a sense, you could prove that Sakyamuni, the historic Buddha, never existed, and it wouldn't really make a difference for Buddhism, because it's not so much... Buddhism isn't so much based on what this one man did or what he claimed to be or anything like that. It's based on being on the idea that its teachings work to help you uh, escape from the uh, suffering of existence and so forth. So it doesn't make a difference in whether or not the historical Buddha lived. It does make a very difference on whether or not Jesus Christ lived and whether he actually did what uh, we claim he did. So that's why uh, I talk about Christianity being a historic religion, and that's why history is so important into uh, whether or not we, we actually believe uh, in the uh, Christian faith. Now when I say prove or disprove, I don't mean like science. Um, in science you prove or disprove something by, by conducting an experiment and then repeating that experiment to make sure you get the same results each time. And then scientists check each other to make sure that, that they can replicate the, uh, the experiment and get the same results. Well history isn't like science, right? Because you in science, you know, you take the, the stereotypical example of, um, you know, basic uh, experiment people will do is they'll put one plant in a closet and one plant in the sunlight and they'll see which one actually grows. And this is how, you know, in elementary school you learn about the scientific method because you compare the plants and your variables whether or not you have sunlight or not. Well, when you deal with history, you've only got one plant, right? The moment the, the historical event happens and then it's gone and you can't uh, replay it you have to rely on historical sources, on writings, on uh, test, eyewitness testimonies, on various documents and things that re recall the event. But the, once the event happens, it's, it's done. And so we can't really prove history in the same way we can prove something scientifically, um, but we can do it more like in a court of law, right? In a court of law, uh, the jury decides whether someone is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt or not guilty. And that's what we're trying to do, is trying to prove the most reasonable explanation, or that's what we're trying to find in history, is the most reasonable explanation. And I contend that the most reasonable explanation uh, about um, Jesus is that he really was who he says it is, and that the Catholic Church really is what it says it is. And I, in fact, came to believe in Jesus in the Catholic Church because of this, through my own uh, study of history. I'll begin now with uh, my story. Uh, I was raised without much of a religious background. Uh, I remember going to vacation Bible study a few times and um, going to, at the time, uh, my uh, public elementary school would actually sometimes release us to a local Methodist church uh, for religious instruction. And uh, it was just fine. No one, it was a very different time, right? No one, no one was bothered by that. And the only kid whose parents didn't give him permission uh, was, they were very, very conservative Protestants and they didn't want any liberal Methodists uh, messing with their kids' faith. Um, so it was a very, very different time. But by middle school, I had essentially uh, lost what little faith I had and in fact become 
very uh, anti-religious. And a lot of this um, was a reaction to what I saw as the, the hypocrisy and insincerity of the Christians that I was around. And of course, in the town I grew up in, pretty much everyone was Christian. And uh, I, from what I saw, it seemed like uh, people were Christians uh, in order to make say that they were better than other people to say well you're going to hell and I'm going to heaven doesn't that make me better than you and we're often very insincere was that they seem to to say well I love Jesus and all this but then would treat other people very poorly um, and uh, not act in, in ways that were in line with the doctrine that they claimed to believe in now in uh, retrospect one thing I should say was that uh, and th there was some truth to this um, and this is one thing that really turned me off and this is a reminder to all Christians, you know, be very careful how you behave and be, be, be sure that you are, are really walking the walk if you're talking the talk. But at the same time, I was, in many ways, was unfair to these people uh, in that I uh, only looked at some of the bad things that they would do and I didn't give any of them any allowance for just the fact that human beings, we even, you know, we, we fail sometimes, we make mistakes. And so I was, was being kind of too strict with them. Uh, I was also being, uh, in a sense, also hypocritical because I blamed them, blamed them and attacked them for things that, that I also did, uh, and that was, was unfair. Uh, and also, I should point out that I made a key error is that whenever I met a Christian who was bad, I said, see, Christianity is useless. Whenever I met a Christian who was good, um, I would say, well, see, I would say, well, they were just good and nice anyway, and it has nothing to do with their Christianity. So I was, I was really um, unfair to these people. But this was the result, though, was that because I did run into some, some real problems and some, some real difficulties, it really pushed me away, and I just didn't see, um, and I also didn't meet any Christians who could answer my intellectual problems with the faith. Now, one of the big uh, changes for me was when I, I met atheists who were um, not particularly nice, and I saw, well, maybe it's these... Uh, the Christians don't have the monopoly on not being nice, and then I realized, you know, I'm not really that good of a person <laughs> myself, and I'm really being unfair to these people. I'm, I'm judging them by too strict of a standard. So that's that's just, um, and I'm not judging myself, you know, I'm being really strict with them, but being really lenient with myself. So I, as I realized that, that was a major uh, shift that forced me to kind of realize, uh, change my understanding of Christianity and of faith and of human beings. So that's a bit of background here's how history comes in. I always remember being interested in uh, history from, from when I was very young. I remember sitting with my father watching uh, historical documentaries on TV. I remember loving social studies and history class and um, so forth. So when I came to college I took um, history courses and one course I took was a course on Japanese history and uh, the course covered maybe 14th to early 19th century Japanese history. An important period during that time is the coming of uh, Catholic Christianity to Japan in the 16th century. And uh, Japan at the time was going through a uh, kind of uh, a period of civil war. And the, the, you know, all these different parts of Japan were fighting other parts of Japan. And the Portuguese came in and they were merchants and they brought guns and the Japanese at the time didn't really have guns and so this would of course give you a big advantage in a civil war if you have a gun and the other guy doesn't uh, and also the, the Portuguese were willing to trade and that brought in lots of money so people and the, the Portuguese of course missionaries also came with them and so this led to the conversion of some of the elite Japanese generals and their followers and so forth. And so at first, you know, this kind of confirmed my views because I said, well, people, they really only believe in Christianity or in any religion just to get something. This was kind of my, my view. It was, it was actually kind of influenced by a kind of a Marxist um, understanding of history without me realizing. But this was basically my view was people aren't, Christians aren't really sincere. They only believe in something in order to, to get something else, right? So uh, in my experience, okay, Christians aren't sincere. They just belong to church. So they can go, uh, go to all these parties and go do youth group and go do all these fun things. They don't really believe in their faith. And at first, then this story of Japanese Christianity kind of confirmed my previous views, right? Okay, yeah, see, these, this, this confirms it. These people are just converting to Christianity in order to get guns so they can fight, right? Well, eventually the Civil War ended and the, uh, Japan became one unified country. And the Japanese uh, leader uh, who unified them said, well, 
I don't really trust these Christians. They're members of this foreign religion. Uh, they could unite and overthrow me, so I'm going to persecute them. And that's what happened. And here was kind of the issue that I, th this is what really forced me kind of rethink things, was that when the, the, the government would say, okay, you Christians, you need to give up your faith or we're going to kill you, some of the Christians just said, okay, well, go ahead and kill us. They were, and they died as martyrs. And this was, you know, Japanese Christians as well as the foreign missionaries were willing, many of them were willing to die for their faith rather than give it up. And in fact, a group of Christians went underground and kept their faith for about 200 years and then showed up again and revealed themselves when Japan opened up again and uh, um, Catholic priests were there. And they said, hey, we're, we're Catholics too. We've been in hiding for the last couple hundred years. And so this really... For, forced me that these this uh, the story of these Japanese martyrs and that's what this picture is depicting the martyrs of Nagasaki um, what this really forced me to do was to admit that you could be sin a sincere Christian you could be a sincere religious believer now here's the thing before I had kind of dismissed Christian truth claims about Jesus about the church and so forth by just saying well they just are hypocrites that are you know they're insincere I don't need to listen to their arguments right and that's 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 actually not logical, right? Someone could be, even if someone's sincere or hypocritical, their argument could actually be a good argument. But this took away that. I had to admit now that Christians could be good people, that they could be sincere people. And so that means that now I have to deal with the truth claims. Now I have to deal with, with what Jesus is actually saying and what the Christians are saying about him.